So I don't want to obsess about it. Um, there's a branch of differential equations, existence and uniqueness proofs. And from one point of view, I think it's interesting and significant because I've already said that you're usually not going to be able to solve a differential equation, but you'll still want to study the solution. Well, the problem is, I mean, it's easy to write down things. that don't have solution. So you'd like to be confident as you're studying the solution that the solution actually exists. And I mean, the short version is that most differential equations are going to have solutions, no problem. Um, especially, we're going to look at differential equations, you know, motivated by real world situations. And we'll know they have solutions just because, well, because the real world situation exists. I mean, there is some sickness and it is spreading at this rate. And the number of people who are sick at a given time is the solution to the differential equation. It doesn't really make sense to ask whether that has solutions because you can see that it does. So just more out of cultural enrichment than anything else. There is one extremely famous theorem that we'll just take 10 or so minutes to touch on. And after that, we'll just assume that all of the differential equations we look at in this class have solutions. So dy dx is no longer assumed to be a function of x. You can have x's and y's over there. So the integration technique doesn't work. You can't use integration to solve this. But does a solution exist? Now, to answer this question, you look at this function, f of x comma y, and then and this is the only partial derivative I will ever write down in this class. But you look at the partial derivative of that function with respect to y. And then if you can draw a rectangle around the point A comma B. This A comma B comes from the initial condition. If you can draw a rectangle around that point in the plane, such that both those functions, f and the partial derivative, are continuous on the rectangle. Then, 
a solution exists and the initial condition makes it unique. A unique solution exists on some interval of the x-axis containing A. In practice, all of the functions we look at in a day-to-day -day basis are continuous on their domain. So asking for stuff to be continuous, and if stuff is continuous, then the differential equation has a solution. That's going to mean in practice, well, as we said, that most differential equations have solutions. So, I mean, think of like dy dx equals x plus y plus the sine of x times y. And let's see, oh, y of three equals seven. Well, this is a terribly complicated differential equation. I mean, I guess it could be worse. It's first order, at least. But I have no idea how you'd solve the thing. What I can say, though, is that x is continuous and y is continuous. So x times y is continuous, and the sine is continuous. So the sine of a continuous function is continuous. And that function is continuous everywhere. As for the partial derivative, Okay, so we treat y as our variable and x as a constant. And the partial derivative is zero plus one plus x times the cosine of xy. And one is continuous and x is continuous and y is continuous and xy is continuous. So the cosine of xy is continuous. This function built up from continuous pieces is continuous everywhere. So, I mean, all we need is that around the point three seven, we can draw a rectangle where everything is continuous. Any rectangle we draw will do because these functions are continuous, not just on some rectangle, they're continuous on the entire Cartesian plane. So our theorem says, A solution to this differential equation is y of x, so it's a function on the real number line, and this solution might not exist everywhere, but on some interval containing three 
this solution y of x exists. So we might not be able to find it, but it definitely exists, and we can try to study it. Um, the fact that the interval contains three is significant because, I mean, well, if, if the solution didn't exist at three, then the statement that the solution equals a seven at three would, wouldn't make any sense. It would contradict itself. So, I mean, the take-home message from this section, there's not any homework from 1.3, um, but the take-home message is that because all the stuff we work with in our day-to-day -day lives, all of these are continuous functions that causes the differential equations we write down to have solutions. And that is that.